if you ask each different department of the church, which is the most important ministry of the church, they would all say, well, my department, youth or music or preaching. I think the children's minister actually has the best argument. Here's why. If you look at the American family, just average American family, drive up the street, knock on a door, and you ask, what are you doing this week? The schedule on mama's calendar, the, the schedule on, uh, on dad's uh, iPad is going to be about their children. I'm going to go to a soccer game on Tuesday night. I'm going to go to a dance recital on Wednesday night. I'm going to go to a, a t-ball game on Thursday night. Parents, for better or for worse, are arranging their entire lives around the activities of their children. So, like it or not, children really do drive not only the schedules of a family, but in many ways, the economics. What are, what are you buying? Well, we're going, to buy a, we're going to buy a minivan and not a sports car. Why? Because we have three kids, and we need a minivan to lug them around with all the sports equipment that they have. That is just the trend of America right now, and it is bleeding over into the church as well. It is the children's programming in public schools that are driving the parents. Hence, it is the children's programming of the church that will equally drive the parents. And if you can get a kid interested in the programs at the church, it is a strong possibility that you will likely get the parents altering their weekly schedule as they do with sports and school activities to be involved in those kids' activities. That's the first reason. Here's the second reason I would argue that the children's ministry is the most important ministry of the church. That is, who invites other friends to anything? Parents, they have a few friends. I mean, limited number of friends. Teenagers, they have a little larger number of friends, but it is still a fairly small pool of friends. But you look at a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, when they throw a birthday party, they have to invite everybody in the class, right? Valentine's Day comes. you got to buy a big box of cards because little Johnny, he's got to give a Valentine's to every person in the class, boys and girls. That's a little odd. But nonetheless, you've got the, the, the kids who are in elementary school, their level of friendships are much broader and more ethnically integrated more economically integrated than any other friendships. The quickest way to reach a community is through the friendship circles of children that reach other families. I, I think that just makes sense to you. But here's something else. A teenager, when they have friends, it is to the exclusion of the parents. So once a kid is 13 years old, even younger than that in most cases, the way God designed the teenage mind to work is to distance themselves from mom and dad. You think about how wise that was. I know it is a pain when you have teenagers because your daughter wants to convince all her friends of you know that she was an immaculate conception just like Jesus and I didn't really have parents and my dad's a dork and my mom, you don't even want to know about her. Teenagers differentiate from the parents. That's actually wise. God did that. So the come 21, 22, they would know how to be independent adults. And at that point, they kind of reintegrate with the parents that they loved when they were children. But up to the time of at least 10, both boys and girls are completely dependent on the parents for their friendship circles. Friendships are important to all of us. But the way that you, as a 10-year-old, the way you get friends is mom drives you somewhere and dad plays t-ball with you and the, the, the equipment and the snacks all depend on the parents. Therefore, it is the children's ministry that is most likely to integrate the parents that are in the stream of friendships. So if you want to reach your community for Christ, you better reach the six to ten-year-olds.